Hello there. How are you today? That is such a loaded question as I record this podcast, given the COVID-19 moment that we're in. This kind of connection and giggling, however, is more important than ever. While we're all listening more lately to, I hope, positive messages about now and about our future, this couldn't be a more perfect time to connect you with my guests, who, by the way, outnumber me. This is plural. Imagine three women in a room passionate about a topic, and you may imagine it could be difficult to get a word in edgewise or make a point, but you'd be wrong. There are so many good points in this episode. I'm going to end this intro and we're going to dive right in. First, let me tell you about my guests. Demonstrating the power of midlife reinvention, this dynamic duo, Joe Jamie Tyler, who is an image consultant and blogger, and Lana Helda, an interior designer, hit the road in a tour bus, carving out new adventure and space for midlife women in the podcast arena. They believe today's women are in a collective mood to cast aside the stereotype of defining their value and possibilities by their age. These ladies don't just talk, they walk the walk. To support their listeners, they co-authored the Ladies Roadmap Lifestyle Journal as a guide for women as they nurture and create their own midlife path forward. Ladies, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. It's great Hi, to be Deborah. here. It's great to be here. Okay. So I have this image here of a tour bus with, you know, all of the luxuries of a, of a concert. Yes. yes. Hiding yes. in it. Yes. So tell me about that, first of all. <laughs> oh, well, this is Joe Jamie here. And uh, uh, my husband and I, about 10 years ago, just, just had a crazy idea to sell everything and buy a, a big motor coach and tour around the country. So that's what we've been doing. And it's been an absolute joy and fun. And that's what we do. And so now we have Lana who comes along with us every once in a while. And we, we run around and podcast and meet our guests and have so much fun. And now, wait a minute, you forgot the most important part. This is Lana. You forgot why it looks like a rock star tour bus. Well, you can brag about it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's better. Be- anyway, they came to me when they got this bus. I had worked on several of their homes and they said, we got this new bus and it's a really nice one. It's one of those Prevo. Will you redo it? So we went in and redesigned the whole thing. So it really is beautiful and looks like you walked into a penthouse apartment or something. Oh my gosh. How amazing. Okay. So literally I should get some pictures to put in the show notes. Oh, yeah, we'll, we can, we'll send them. <laughs> so good. All right. So it's not what happens in the bus stays in the bus. No, <laughs> maybe sometimes <laughs> we started this whole show there and it, it was, it, you know, just us learning to use technology in the beginning to to create and do a podcast and then to actually start. We did our first podcast in that bus. So that one was, uh, that was quite an experience. Amazing. And we've already gotten off to a great start with a little laughter because I think we can all use a little bit of that right now. What are you ladies doing to stay calm and relieve stress during these uncertain times that we're in? Well, I think first of all, I've been using this time to do things that I normally can't do. You know, having a full-time interior design business and a podcast, it, my life gets very crazy. So I had put a little bit of the stuff on hold, especially for the podcast. And now Joe Jamie and I are spending a lot of this time to dig in and do things on our website and whatnot, things that you just don't have time to get to. But for my calm, I think I it's my walks. I'm going out and going for beautiful walks. I'm fortunate that I live in Southern California. The weather's beautiful. But that and then meditation every morning, I would say, are keeping me calm. Right. And this is Joe Jamie here. Uh, we also are big time journalers, as you mentioned in the introduction. And one of the things about journaling is that you can start writing down all these things that are rolling around in your head and and uh, it just gets it down on paper and out of your head. So that's very calming. 
Oh, gosh. And I love journaling, especially right before bed, because I think so many of our listeners might be saying, yeah, rolling around in my head while I should be rolling around in my bed. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, the, one of the uh, things we like to express with the journaling is it truly helps you identify whatever it is. Say you're worrying right now. There's so much to worry about and you're listening to the news and you go to sleep and all of these worries are going on. If you will identify write it down in your journal. It helps you identify what that problem is. And then you can journal about it and it gets it out of your head so that you can go to sleep. Kind of a, I've dumped this, I've taken care of this right now. It'll be here in the morning. I can pick it up again later. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. Any other reasons why journaling is so effective? Well, actually, there's a statistic out there, and it says only 1% of people who write down their goals and review them regularly lead them to, um, they actually live a more happier and satisfying life. And part of writing things down is how having them be on a piece of paper, see what you're envisioning, and then going out and manifesting it. And it happens so much better when you actually write it down than just think about it. So good. Okay. So I have to, so obviously we do this not face-to-face. We're doing this remotely. So I've never actually met you, but I have your picture and I'm looking at your picture and I can't not like you. I I love you both. (laughs) Just from looking at the picture, it's like these two women would be my friends. It's like, what, why are you there? Why are you in Southern California? You should be here in Scottsdale. Deborah, we felt like that about you. We, we've been watching your videos on your face, on your, on your Instagram. And we felt the same way about you. You're just so approachable and genuine. So thank you for saying that. And I wanted to say real quick, uh, Lana and I have actually been dear, dear friends for over 30 years. We met when we had two babies and we have stayed friends for all these years. And it was at the a couple of years ago that we sat down just to have a little retreat together. It was just the two of us. And we decided we need to do something that we can stay connected. And now this is what that came of it. And also something that connected us to women in midlife because s- things are so different in midlife. It's We've moved. We, we don't have as many friends as we used to. So those that are really near and dear to us, we have to keep in touch and also support our community of over 50 women because the press out there forgets us. We've become invisible. Mm-hmm. Which is quite amazing when you consider the demographic that we are and what we represent to it's certainly to the United States, you know, in terms of the wealth we now have or will inherit and that we influence so much of the every household decision. You know, yes. at least 85% of it's the statistic, we influence it because it's our kids, it's our peers, spouses, and our in-laws and outlaws. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because we are doing a podcast and uh, around midlife, but we're meeting so many women who have become influencers in their fifties and reinvented their careers and are reimagining midlife. So we're seeing it and we're, we're talking about it. So I'm thinking that we are going to see a change in, in, in the reaction and how people are treating midlife years in general. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. I want to back up one step because I, I know that, you know, you've got the journal. We talked about it in the intro and we we're just talking about the effectiveness of this right now and especially the value of getting that brain dump so that we can get a better night's sleep and boost our immune system. Hint, hint to all those listeners. What makes your journal unique? I think because we spent so much time thinking about what midlife women are, what our issues truly are. As Joe Jamie said, they're different than they were in our 30s and 40s. So our journal has, not only do we have, what are your dreams and desires? Are you remembering those dreams and desires that you may have put aside while you were raising your family or you're busy working, reminding women that it's never too late to still 
can rekindle those dreams and desires. So we work toward that. We also have our habit sheet because we believe to make those dreams and desires happen, you have to sometimes change some of your habits to fit these new things in. So we we believe strongly in having an accountability partner. So we've we've, we've tried to make your journal and our show an accountability partner. Yeah, this is a unique journal because we don't know of any other journal out there that is specifically designed for women in midlife. And we have a whole, the first part of the whole journal is actually a workbook that you work through. And that's where we have all the prompts to look at, look at deep inside, look at ideas, write them down of how you might want to reinvent yourself or just put in some fun in your life. Because let's face it, the last... 30, 40 years, we've all been taking care of everybody else. And now it's time to, t- to take some time and take care of ourselves. I love that. And I want to go back to dreams. So never too late to, you know, look at those dreams, reignite them and or maybe exchange them. Maybe that isn't your dream anymore. So I've got a question for the two of you. So one of you in, in interior designer, one of you an image consultant and blogger, and yet the podcast is about your phase of life. It's not necessarily about your career or vocation. Is this or was this a dream or something that it's your bus? It gives wheels to the dream. Well, I think probably all of those things, but let me say that my dear sparkly Joe Jamie friend is the one who said, I want to do a podcast. She's a po- she was a podcast junkie. I was busy, so busy working. I wasn't really listening to that many podcasts at the time. And I'm one of those people that says, sure, why not? <laughs> so now that we're fully engaged in this thing, and let me tell you, we are so heavily committed. It is my dream now. It is kind of my everything. For example, right now I'm supposed to be being a grandma, but because of uh, coronavirus, I'm not getting to. My daughter just had a baby and I haven't even gotten to see that baby. If I did not have this podcast to put my heart and soul into right now, I can tell you I would be very depressed. So for me, it's not only now a dream, but I just feel it has just made my days in midlife more exciting. I'm getting to meet women like you. We both are, right, Jamie? Exactly. We, we, go ahead. I was just going to chime in here and, and, and just for myself, uh, I was this image consultant for many, many years and I had a fashion blog called Fabulous After 40 where I was just blogging about fashion every day. And I finally looked at Lana and I said, I have to tell you, I... I don't have the passion for this anymore. I'm actually, I am burnt out and I want to find something deeper. I want to start going inside. So that again, to answer your question is why we started this because we wanted to find some fulfillment in our life. And so many women at this time are looking to find some more fulfillment and maybe they are burnt out. We get it. We've been there. We hear about it every day and we see the women that have stopped taken the time to really rethink about it and had the courage to jump back in with both feet and try something new. Who cares? We didn't know if this was going to go or not. We didn't know if this was going to fail or bomb. But guess what? We just talked to May Musk yesterday, Elon Musk's mom on our show. We had no idea when we started this that we would be doing these types of things. We just got a a syndicated radio show that's going to be heard all over the world. So who thought? Who knew? But we just thought, you know what? You got to just try. Amazing. And so that's what we're trying to share and teach to other women, which we think you are too, is ladies. And this is what May said. And she is the face of CoverGirl at 71 years old. And when you hear her story, you realize how many times she reinvented herself. And that is what we keep hearing over and over again from these dynamic women. Uh, Christina Ferrari and uh, Franny Goldie, who who was a, a, a Grammy award-winning songwriter. And now she makes pants and Oprah calls them magic pants. So you hear these women say, saying how they had to start over. And sometimes their situations were very dire. Like Franny Goldie's husband has on early onset 
Alzheimer's and she had to do something. So she started her business in her kitchen. So these stories we have of reinvention are really amazing. I mean, I, I really would hope that your li- listeners will, uh, will tune in and listen to some of these amazing women. You know, I love that. And I really, right now, I feel like the moment we're in, we can't let this go. What you've just said is that you've talked to so many women who reinvented themselves. And in many cases, they were in a dire situation. Can I ask you this? Can you think of any woman who reinvented herself that wasn't in a dire situation? Well, I guess we were the same. We weren't really. Yeah, we yeah. Just, we, <laughs> we're, we could be the best best case scenario. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them that wasn't. We have, um, a, actually, we had a, a wonderful woman on the other day that whose three of her girlfriends were diagnosed with breast cancer, and they all found out it was a common thread that deodorant that you would buy at the grocery store weren't was not. It's terrible. Well, for the you. doctors. Well, the doctors. That's the one thing that every every woman, the doctor told them their biggest thing was what deodorant do you use? Not are you drinking too much wine? Are you you know whatever? But what deodorant do you use? So she went out and made yes. her own deodorant, and it's amazing. It's a deodorant, natural deodorant. It's all na- yeah, it's all natural, and so that's a woman that took her friends' dire situations and turn them into something that's being, she's being lauded. She's being awarded all sorts of awards now for her deodorant, her natural deodorant. Oh, and then to Jamie, we had the woman whose young child came to her years ago and said, mommy, I don't want to eat animals anymore. And her daughter would not eat anything, but she said, I'm going to be a vegetarian. So the, her, she started making her own, uh, bars trying to get protein into her daughter. And now Kashi bought her bars and she's the ambassador spokesperson for this very popular food bar. So we have all kinds of stories of women who they didn't have to, they chose to. I love that. And I love the relationship to that of this moment we're in, because I think that what the world is going through, literally the world is going through this time when we will come out of this, but we will never be the same. We're not going back. Things won't be the same, no matter what we're talking about. And and I think there is a, a caution. There is maybe some depression and anxiety because we don't know. And yet there will be some spontaneous growth and there will be some pivots made and things that happen because they potentially need to happen. Necessity is the mother of invention, but I think it's an opportunity for so many of our listeners to take into account, you know, how do I stop thinking I want it to go back to the way it was before and start thinking, what was it about my life that I didn't love and how can I reinvent it? and change it? What would I love for it to be? And look at this as an opportunity to birth that. That's you know, such I a think great... A, oh, yeah, go ahead, go, go ahead, ahead, Lana. I was going to say, that is such a great point. But And I was going to say, I'm actually, and I'm sure you are too, talking to different friends that have when, and we had a women that have different situations from just like you said, they are revamping their entire way they're doing their business to then I have the ones that are saying, I'm so depressed. I, I have no motivation to do anything. So it's interesting. You see the people that are the can do, can do ones that say, by golly, I'm going to take this and make an advantage out of it. So it's a choice. It's a choice, people. You have to dig deep. You have to pull yourself out by your bootstraps. Get yourself a journal. Start writing all the things you are grateful for and work on it. I mean, it takes work. And we know you know that, Deborah, because we see you teach it every day. You you only get the rewards in life if you're willing to do the work. And we hear it from women over and over and over again in our podcast. But the great thing is, too, is that journaling is only a five minute, if you want it to be longer, you can, but as little as two or three minutes a day, just do a little bullet points and write down a few little things and always write down what you're grateful for. Find something to be grateful for. I so love that. Yes. And, and I do want to come back just to one of those points. So 
although some of you, some of you listening right now may be on that side where you're wanting to curl up in the fetal position with your thumb in your mouth. And you know, a little of that is okay. And that might be where you are today, but it doesn't mean you have to stay there. I think we're all going to go through these tides of ups and downs and roller coasters as we go through this. And knowing that you can come out of it, even if that's where you're at, you're at a low point right now. Okay. So let's, let's unpack a few more things. How can women prepare? What can they be doing right now to, number one, keep their spirits up or get them up for the future? Because we know this too shall pass, even if we don't know when. Well, one of the fun exercises that we ask women to do in the journal is called your M-U-M moment, which is your most unusual moment. And that is to actually be mindful and think every day to look for something that's positive or unusual, whether it's being appreciative of the hummingbird that's taking a sip out of the flower, or whether you're grateful that you've got to have a chance to take a walk today, or even the fact that you got a call from your kids to make you feel better. It's just one little thing every single day. And if you start writing them down in the days that you're feeling bad and you flip through and you just look at those things and you think, wow, I do have a lot to be grateful for. Plus, this is a this is a historical time. And by writing down your thoughts and writing down what is going on in your life, it'll be very interesting to go back and look at it one day. And, and then when we are, because this is going to pass, as we all know, we will have a more normal life. We don't know what it will look like yet. But I think one of the things that I personally have learned from from starting business from businesses from scratch and even this podcast and some of the hardships that I've experienced is that I had already been practicing one step at a time, one day at a time. And I will honestly tell you that I don't look too much further out than a week to two weeks a time in my, at a time in my life because that's what's gotten me through. That's what makes me be able to eat that elephant one bite at a time and finally finish something because I find most things that you go after in life, especially if if they're big goals, can seem overwhelming and unattainable. This seems overwhelming and a little bit unattainable right now. However, get up, make your bed, get your clothes on, go for a walk, watch Deborah and do your exercises, listen to a positive podcast, and before you know it, you're having a better day. And one more thing to even add to that is do something for somebody else. Volunteer. Um, find out if there's somebody that's stuck in the house and they need you to share your dinner with them. Always doing something for somebody else is one of the first things to making yourself feel better. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. Okay. So right now, during this time, so I'd love to hear from each of you. Because routine, keeping a routine when we've got chaos around us and maybe don't feel the control, keeping a schedule, so, so important. So I kind of a twofold question here. So first of all, how are you each keeping up with your own good habits? And give me some examples of some that are kind of, this has to happen. This is a part of, I I can't give this up, stay back. This is, I have a boundary around this. Yes, I think uh, as this is Lana, I think for me, it is definitely uh, getting up in the morning and first thing doing my meditation, super important. I mean, I feel my blood pressure go down. I feel myself relax. So meditation, I'm using this time because I have a little more time. I make sure that I have my, you know, healthy green drink and I'm being very specific about taking all of my supplements and the things that I do that keep me feeling good. So I think health and uh, and mindfulness for me right now. Uh, I'm the same as Lana, in fact, in that I wake up and I don't look at my phone. I don't listen to the news. I don't do anything. I immediately go to my meditation and that grounds me for the day. And then, of course, exercise. This has been hard on me because I actually am a class kind of gal. So I have a class that I can ride my bicycle to. And that's not happening, obviously, right now. So I've had to really struggle with trying to find ways to exercise every day and put that into my schedule. It's tempting 
at this time because we're actually are super busy and it's tempting to get, let the whole day go by and not exercise. So uh, once again, watching Instagram like yourself, even if I would just do the stomach exercise that you recommended today uh, would be really helpful. But I have to say, really exercise, fresh air is really important at this time to keep sane and and all that. And, and maybe making sure that you do have a laugh or something every day and not watch too much of the news and, and limit that. I love that. And just want to clarify to all of you listeners, she did not mean watch Deborah. She meant exercise. Yes. That's- <laughs> <laughs> what, Get Deborah? on your mat. It all happens on the mat, ladies. <laughs> Deborah, you just called me out because I did only watch. I was like, wow, that was- she's teaching it really good. I got to try it that way, but I haven't yet. So, okay. I'm, I'm called out on that. I'm, I got to get to work after the show, after we get off this call. <laughs> For sure. 4 p.m. every day we're doing yoga, 4 p.m. Pacific right now. So at least as we record. So listeners, depending on where we are, we may not still be doing that, but you can come back and check with us. <laughs> okay. So one of the hardest questions potentially, or most interesting, it can go anywhere you want it to. I ask all my guests. So I'm asking both of you, is there a question that I should have asked you today that I missed? <laughs> ah, right. Yep. Well, I love that. Mm, trying There's to think about that. Well, I don't maybe know. how maybe how it's working out. You know, not everyone has a partner at home that they're basically. Let's be honest. You're kind of you're stuck with. I mean, if you are, are staying home as you're supposed to be, and you do have a partner, you are in with them twenty four seven. And how's that going? That could be a fun question. Uh, there you go. How is that going? Well, fortunately, I think to Jamie and I both, we are very accustomed to having our husbands around all the time. My husband and I actually off it. We don't do the same work together, but we office together. We have a big studio. So I'm accustomed to my husband being around. So he does his thing and I do mine. However, to Jamie's point, I will say we have been making a point of really connecting more in the evenings and chatting more and laughing more. And we're actually, I kind of think we're having maybe even a better time than we were before. Yeah, I think it's been fun. It's actually been really great for us and same thing, but we're both very happily married. We both been married over 30 years. So we're lucky. Yeah, we're fortunate in that. But that's not to say we we don't work at it. We work hard at it because there's times when my husband and I don't even, I mean, we were, even though we're here together, we might not even hardly say two words together. So I think we both are feeling the, the confinement. And so it makes it more fun to, we have to interact with one another. So good. I love that. All right, ladies, where can our listeners find more of you? Great. Yes. Everybody can find us at our website, ladiesroadmap.com. And we are podcast, Ladies Roadmap to Living Ageless, is on iTunes and Stitchers. And you could even say to Alexa, Alexa, play Ladies Roadmap, and it'll come right up. <laughs> and we have a freebie for our- Oh, I'm sorry. We have a freebie for everybody. And if you just go to our website, ladiesroadmap.com, up will pop a box, seven tips to journaling your best life. It's a beautiful, quick way to to get an idea of if journaling really is for you. So go over to our website and check that out. And we will have that for you guys for free. That is so awesome and so generous. Thanks so much. And you all who are listening, I know if you're walking, you're jogging, you're working, or you are driving, I've got you covered. Those links will be in the show notes waiting for you and while you were talking. So when you said Alexa, she's like, what? over here. She's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what do you want? All right. She's so noisy. Okay. Ladies, thanks so much for being here. And listeners, if there's a question that I should have asked that I didn't, leave it below the show link today at flipping50.com forward slash ladies. That's plural. And what are you waiting for? Let's start Flipping 50 together. <laughs>